So we need some back stretches, some neck stretches. The thing about the back is that our legs are connected to our pelvis and our back is connected to our pelvis. So by stretching our pelvis and our legs, we are affecting our back. So that's what we want to do. You can sit however you want to. I don't want to sit too long to begin. Uh, I want to get some prana moving, some energy moving throughout our body. And so I've chosen the prana mudra. And so what it is, is it's the peace fingers, essentially. And you connect your thumb to the tips of your ring finger and your pinky finger so that the peace fingers are extended. And so that's the prana uh, mudra. Mudras are hand positions that we do in yoga. And prana is this, the Sanskrit word for vital energy, the energy that flows through your body, the energy that comes from your breath, from the air around you. And so if you'd like, you can lower your gaze down to a spot on the floor or close your eyes. You're welcome to keep your eyes open or closed during your practice today. And let's start to breathe and really focus on breathing in. And that breath in is pulling the prana, pulling the energy in through your nose, energizing your blood with prana and oxygen, and then you can just slowly let it go. Breathing in, energizing, letting it go. Let's do three more chronic breaths, really focusing on breathing in. Slowly letting the breath out through your nose or through an open mouth. Now, as we work through our practice today, we'll focus on the pranic movements, and those will be the upward type movements. So you're welcome to release your hands. My hands are feeling nice and warm. I like to blame it on that, uh, that energizing breath, but also the mudra. And so we always kind of start with this movement, but it's such a great way to synchronize our breath with a movement. It's called vinyasa. So as you inhale, scoop the air up. And as you exhale, let the air flow back down to your lap. We'll just do that a couple times. Inhaling, just scoop the air up. Floating as we exhale slowly. Let your hands just rest on your lap, on your knees, on your thighs, kind of wherever they land. And we'll start with a really deep cat back. So roll back to your tailbone, roll down to your belly, down to your lap, hang off of your legs. And then let's try our best to do the opposite by rolling forward to our pubic bone, letting the belly lean forward, shoulders might even squeeze back. Nice, so that's called cow, seated cow. So we'll go back and forth a couple of times. So if your legs are straight, it's gonna feel very different than if your legs are crisscrossed, but there's nothing wrong with having your legs straight. It's just gonna feel different. You might be affecting different muscle groups, hamstrings rather than pelvis. So as I inhale, I roll forward to the pubic bone into cow. As I exhale, I roll back into cat. I'm just going to roll back and forth through these postures a couple of times. Getting into sync with my breath. Excellent. You're welcome to switch it up however you need to at any time. Always listening to what we need for our own individual body and our own practice. So with that being said, Come back to center and rock back and forth, side to side, rather than forward and backward. You're more than welcome to switch your legs if you need to, changing the way that you're seated so that the sensation changes as well. Back and forth a couple more times. 
This is a lubrication move. So we're lubricating where our spine sits into our pelvis, into the sacrum, where each little vertebra slides and sits on top of the one on the knee. Nice work. Let's come on back to center. All right. So stretch your legs out here. Let's give them a little bit of a break. I'm gonna sweep the hands up to the sky. And while I'm there, separate the feet so that they're at least hip distance apart, maybe wider. And uh, we'll start to round forward here. Reach for your feet, reach for your knees, reach for your ankles, reach for the floor. If you happen to have a yoga strap handy, you can certainly wrap that around the bottom of your feet. A, uh, like a strap or a like robe tie works really good if you don't have a fancy yoga strap. What else? A scarf works really well. No. A belt works really well. Yeah. <laughs> Anything that will lengthen your arms. Try to relax your shoulders if you can. A lot of times they ride up next to the ears. Last breath. Where do you feel the stretch? Is one leg tighter? Great job, everyone. Let's roll back up to seated. Roll out your shoulders when you rise up. And then go forward to awareness to those shoulder blades, awareness to your neck. Now let's get our whole arms involved here. So put your fingertips on your shoulders up here, or if they just hover, that's fine. And we'll squeeze our elbows down, bring them forward together, and make big circles. You can go the other way as well if you'd like. So feel free to do that if your body is asking for, you know, just a change, change it up a little bit. job. Now let's extend those arms out and we'll make big circles. It's called circumduction. It's the action there. So big circles going forward. Maybe you're going backward first. We'll change it up here in another round. And as you go, you might be hearing pops in there. <laughs> so as I squeeze back, shoulder blades pop a little bit. They come forward. Sometimes that bone on top, it's called the AC joint. Kind of clicks a little bit too. Nice work. Let's drop our hands down. The four points of connection are the two heels and the two sit bones. So let's slide our right hand out so that we've got room, but not so far that our hip lifts, lifts up off the ground. We want to keep our left hip grounded. Left hand will reach up. Maybe it continues over. It's all about what you feel. So only go as far as your body says that's good. Let's take a couple of deep breaths. And if it's hard to breathe, you might just be a tad too far into the posture. So you might just have to lift up half an inch to make room for that breath. Inhale when you're ready, bring it back up to center. Take a moment to pause in the center. Feel how you kind of shifted a little bit. Let's shift to the other side, sliding out to the left. Right sit bone connects. Right hand does the work here. So it might reach up, maybe it continues over. Remember, you can move at your own pace. You don't need to move as quickly or as slowly as me. So you can move faster or slower, depending on what you like. Take that deep breath. That's a good gauge to tell if you're too far in the pose or not. When you're ready, big inhale back to center. You can stay longer though, you have my permission. Let's try it again to each side. So as we go over to the right, this time, let's let our head also lean to the right. I have to really work on relaxing my right shoulder for that. Look up, look down, see if that pulls in any different way. Sometimes the pulls don't necessarily feel good, so making sure to honor that. Remove yourself from the pose whenever you need to. Stay longer if you like. We'll try that same thing on the left. So I just take a moment in the center and then we'll slide out to the left. 
As I go over to the left, I let my left elbow relax. I let my head lean to the left, right arm is reaching. I really feel an interesting stretch on the back right side of my neck. I might look down, look up, making sure not to go into anything that causes pain, discomfort that's too deep. Inhale when you're ready. Now, big inhale, both hands reach out, both hands reach up, climb some ropes. So reach up with the left and the right and the left, back and forth, kind of like you're reaching up an invisible rope on each side, stretching out that side body. It's, I feel it, a lot of fire right here. If your legs are still straight with me, then you'll be like, whoa, my hip flexors are on fire. Otherwise, just the side body, both hands can reach up and then we'll fold forward. So even if your legs are crisscrossed, it's okay. You can just fold forward to the top of your mat. It's just called a Sukhasana fold where with legs straight, it's a forward fold. So no problem. We're just stretching out the back, the hips, the legs in any way that we can. Noticing what you feel here. Deep breath, chronic breath, bringing the energy into your blood and letting any excess out, any stale prana, any used prana out with that exhale. Just roll up whenever you're ready. Stay longer if you need. Getting warmed up. Take my jacket off. All right, so let's work a little bit through the legs. I'm kind of going to the lower body, upper body, back and forth so that we don't get too tired in one area. So let's do our uh, knee to head position on each side. We'll keep our right leg straight, left knee bent. Perhaps you're more than welcome to switch that up and do it the other way because we're gonna do, go right over to the other side. Big inhale to the sky for length in the torso. And then we'll fold right over to the top of the right leg. I let both hands rest on either side of that straight leg, but you're more than welcome to grab for the foot, ankle, shin, knee, use your belt, use a strap, whatever you have available. Take those chronic breaths and use your exhales to try to let go, to try to relax, surrender. Easier said than done sometimes. Gentle with yourself as we add these twists. I'm going to take my left hand and bring it to, onto my leg. So the foot, the ankle, the shin, wherever. Left hand, right leg. Right hand sweeps out to the right and maybe opening the chest. So for me, it's like, eh, I get stuck right there. And I want to be nice and straight. So if I'm too far. I need to slide up so that I can really start to open my chest. Can you take a deep breath too? One last breath. As you exhale, reach your right hand back down to your right ankle or shin. Inhale, sweep your left hand out and open to the left. Inhale, left hand to the sky. Exhale, continue over if your arm allows, if that feels good. And again, we'll try to let our head lean to the right. Right ear, right shoulder, giving ourselves a little bit of a neck stretch. You can certainly change the angle there. You can round your chest. You can open your chest. Try some different movements there. Get creative. Or if you found something that feels really good, you can kind of just hang out there and let it simmer. Work. Also, keep in mind the, how, the length of how you hold these poses. You can change that up whenever you're ready. Bring yourself up, but if it feels super good, you can stay there longer. Next, I'm gonna rotate back ahead and just crisscross this right leg in front. So now I'm in Sukhasana. It means easy pose or happy pose. I know not everyone's happy here. So if you're not and you need some support, put some blocks underneath your knees or wrap a blanket around your ankles and that'll bring some support for your legs. No matter where you are, bring your hands right in front of your legs. If that's your stopping point, stop there. 
If you'd like to keep going forward, just walk your hands forward towards the top of your mat. Just leaning into those legs as much as it feels good too. I know that for some of us, this can be very intense. So making sure to listen to that inner intelligence and not pushing yourself if it's causing deep discomfort. Surrendering with that exhale, trying to just let go. And pressing back to center when you need to. Just kick both legs out when you decide to come back to center. Wiggle out those legs a little bit, get some fluid moving through, some prana energy. We'll keep our left leg straight this time and our right knee bent. Big inhale up to the sky. Rotate to the left slightly for Janu Sirshasana, knee to head position. So just by bowing your head down to your left knee, you'll feel that stretch increase. You can reach on either side of the leg or you're more than welcome to grab for the foot, ankle, knee, use a strap. Find your breath. Try to let go, let go of tension. Breathe through those limitations. The prana is the energy. The word pranayama in yoga means breath control, but it also means breath freedom. So by using your breath, we can clear the way to freedom. And wherever you are, right hand onto the left leg. It could be your foot. I know that's gonna to be too far for me. So I bring my right hand onto my right, uh, left shin. And then I'm gonna sweep my left hand out to the left and maybe back towards the wall behind me so that I'm trying to open my chest out to the left. Don't forget to breathe and remember if it kind of hurts or it's like, can't really take a deep breath, then you might be just be leaning too far into that pose. Switch it up when you're ready, left hand down the left leg, right hand reaches out to the right, opening up the chest, inhale up to the sky, right hand reaches, maybe over your head towards your left foot. Remember, you can try, try different angles here, try to relax your left shoulder, you can lean your head to the left, you could round your chest, you can also open your chest, see what feels the best for you. It's going to be different for each one of us. Always paying attention to how you're moving so that we're not moving into those areas of pain or deep discomfort. And remember to remove yourself from that posture when you need to. I reach my right hand up to the sky and slide my body up to center. Nice job rotating the body ahead and trying to crisscross the left leg in front or stacked on top. Let's work again if that's a little bit difficult, hurts the legs, stack blocks or wrap a blanket around the ankles and that'll help to support the legs. Hands in front of the legs here. You can walk the hands forward. Just stopping when your body says, that's plenty, that's enough for today. Seeing if you can lean into that area, allow it to stretch. I'm trying to let go, let go of your head, your shoulders, your hands, your jaw. Last big breath, use your nostrils to really pull that prana, that energy in and slowly let it go, letting your body relax. Press into the floor when you're ready to remove yourself from that pose. But I know that one can, is a, favorite for a lot, so feel free to stay there. Let's bend both legs once again. We get some blood and prana flowing down through the legs. Nice job, big inhale, reach up to the sky, and we'll meet in a forward fold. Remember to hang out in your favorite postures as long as you need to, to let those muscles stretch. Sometimes time is the missing ingredient.
Shoulders relaxed. Head relaxed. Chin to chest. Rotate your head in each direction. To the left, to the right. So it's like your nose points towards your right arm, nose points towards the left arm. Roll it back up when you like. Do the opposite next. A reverse plank. Hands come behind your body. I support my hands flat on the floor. Squeeze those shoulders back. Looking up. Nice and you know beginner friendly. You can just open the chest up there. Of course, if you'd like to add pressure to the hands, you can by lifting the hips up off of the ground, but it's not necessary. It doesn't feel good for your arms or your hands. Don't do that. We'll come back to center. You can sit like this. You can sit however you want to. We're gonna do some eagle arms next to get into our shoulders and top of the like top of the shoulder and neck area. So I'm a crisscrosser. I'll always come back to crisscross. Let's bring our arms out and make some little cactus arms. They're like goal posts. And then we'll bring our hands and forearms together in front of our body. Stop. Let's just do that a couple of times. The motion is called horizontal adduction and horizontal abduction. Now, when we come to adduction, adding it to the center, we'll slip our right elbow over top our left. And then, so this is step one. You can even give yourself a hug if you like. If you'd like step two, then you'll try to bring your hands, back of your hands together in front of your face. Step three is a wrap around and it's not available for everyone and it's okay. It's just, um, you know, some of our bones are different lengths. Sometimes our shoulders are so tight that they get in the way. See if you can take a breath, move your elbows around a little bit, see what you can feel. Today, it's kind of interesting. I feel almost like a skin stretch. Kind of least when you're ready to do. Remember that. <laughs> No pain, no gain is not the name of the game anymore. <laughs> Unwind when you're ready to and do the opposite. That's cactus arms or bringing your hands back behind you to really open your chest. Stay there, sustain that if you need to. We'll go to the other side next. So when you're ready to, pant. Last time we have right elbow on top. This time we're gonna have left elbow sinking on top. Even if you're laying down on the floor, you can do this pose. Sometimes it actually feels different, better when you're laying down because it's like oh, different muscles are having to be used here. I like to lift my elbows, drop my elbows, kind of pull my arms out away from my chest, lean my head from side to side. But remember, if your chest is like, ow, then release it. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Unwind when you're ready to. Some work. Come on back to center. Just seated nice, roll those shoulders out, get that tension kind of shaken loose. Right. So from there, a couple other arm moves that we should do to stretch here. Let's take our right arm out to the right, squeeze it back like a big wing pulling back. Give yourself a little half hug. Left hand to the right elbow to assist the shoulder here. I kind of feel that through the tricep a little bit. It's more like a skin stretch, but also outer shoulder. Bring your head to the right. Get a nice scaling stretch on the side there. And then this right hand can remind the left shoulder to relax as well. So it's like you got three things going on here, multitasking. <laughs> Next part, bring your head back to center. Open the arms up like wings. Squeeze them back. Left arm will cross in front. Right hand to the left elbow. We lean our head to the left. And you should feel a stretch from your ear down the front side of your neck. Multitasking. Great job. 
as always, stay longer if it feels super good. If it's too much or it's you're like, I'm done, then you can open those arms up, squeeze them back when you're ready. I like to look up too. All right. So right hand reaches up to the sky. Drop the hand right behind your neck or your ear, your left ear. Left hand comes to the right elbow and we're gonna assist it. So it might slide the hand a little bit further. I feel that through my tricep. If you wanna feel more, you can lean a little bit to the left. Feel free to change the legs whenever you need to. Okay. Side body, right side body, right tricep. Okay. Switch it out when you're ready. So I just kind of like drop my uh, left hand behind my head and switch my right hand to my left elbow and lean to the right. Remember, you don't need to look like me because I could sit like this for like three hours. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> and my cat sleeps right here. <laughs> At least when you're ready. It's the only time she snuggles me, so I don't feel bad. <laughs> Look, I don't feel bad. Nice job. All right, so that got a lot of our arm muscles. Let's do a little bit more through the neck. So again, changing the legs if you need to. Let's just lubricate our neck and head halfway through the week here, give it some love. So I'm just tipping my head side to side. Warming it up here at first. Might hear some cracks and pops and snaps as things shift around. And then we're gonna seek the perfect stretch. So remember, not too much, not too little. It's like right in the middle, Goldilocks. Let's lean our head to the left. Options. This is option one. You can just stay here with gravity. Or your left hand could come to your right shoulder to say, relax, right shoulder, it's okay. Or your left hand could come to your right ear to say, come here, head, go a little farther, but that's pretty intense. Lastly, if you still need more, your right fingertips could come to the floor, or you could bind your right hand to your low back. And that's going to create the ultimate stretch. I call it the ultimate discomfort. <laughs> You know, it like feels good, but it also is a little uncomfortable, but nothing you can, can't work through. It's like that itch that you can't quite get. And you're like, finally, I found a good stretch. But you may have to seek it. You have to kind of find it by rocking your head in different directions, trying different variations, and knowing that today you might not find that perfect spot. We have to work towards it. So that's why this becomes a practice practicing to find that perfect spot and release when you're ready so that the left hand releases, the right hand releases, chin to chest. Sadly, this rounded forward flexed position is neutral for us. So let's roll back up to center seated and try the other side. I'm just gonna lean my head to the right. It feels stuck, it's like it's like, oh, I don't wanna go that way. So let's add some different variation. You could soothe your left shoulder with your right hand. You could assist the head a little further with the right hand. You could bring your left fingers to the floor. Left hand can bind to your low back if you like. Try which all, any and all of those and just see what's gonna work the best. Find the right angle. So I have to lean my head to the right and sl slightly forward. So it's like my, right chin is leaning to my right collarbone. Just remember to release whenever you need, but if you found a good spot where it feels really good, you can certainly hang out or kind of rock in and out of that area. Patience is a big part of yoga too. I know that can be difficult for our brain Relax whenever you need to. Bring your chin to chest, relaxing your arms, coming back to flexion. Shoulders slightly rounded forward, chin to chest, and you can even roll your head a couple of times from side to side. Lots of crunchies in there. If you get close enough, you can probably hear it. 
<laughs> Come on up when you're ready to. Now, finally, let's um, finish off the seated sequence with a Baddha Kamasana. So we'll just kind of feet together, knees apart, separating those knees if need be. Again, you can always support with blocks or wrap a blanket around your ankles to get that support. I like to sit up tall when I'm here and then start to lean forward. You can have a rounded back or straight back, but again, always just stopping when your body says, that's, a, that's the spot or ow, don't go past that. <laughs> Great job, movement is good. Stillness is good. Remember that chronic breath, bring some energy in and let it go. Roll up when you're ready. Let's shift into hands and knees from here. So I bring my legs together and kind of swing the legs around. Take your time, grab water if you need some. Grab any cushions for your knees, like blankets or pillows. Garden mats work pretty well too. And we'll just do a couple cats and cows here, really simple, just to rewarm up the spine, bring some awareness back there. Awesome work. And let's get our head really involved here. So for cat pose. Chin really brings into the chest, rising up to the spine. For cow pose, really look up, drop your shoulders. We'll do that just a couple times. Great job. We're going to be moving into a right legged Anjanayasana, which is a lower lunge. So I'm going to take three kicks back behind me for active cat, inhaling with my right leg. Exhaling to bring the knee underneath. Two more like that. Inhale to lift. Exhale to crunch. Controlling that right leg as you lift it up. Controlling it as you bring it through. I'm going to add a fourth one. And on the swing through, I'm going to kick my right leg forward into that lower lunge. Arrange yourself there. Take your time. The back left toes can be tucked or untucked. That's your choice. So here I am in a low lizard lunge. Next up, we'll go through the layers of this. Hands to the knee, next step up. Engage through the core, which means kind of pulling the belly button into the spine. I think about cinching the waistband all the way around the core. Everything pulls into the center so that I can lift my hands to my heart center. The legs don't really change. I'm just maintaining this as I change the upper body. Do cactus arms once again, bending your elbows out to the side, opening up through your chest, looking up. If that hurts at all, squeeze your butt, that might help. Inhale, reach both hands back up to the sky and float those hands down to bring your right foot. Left hand to the mat or a block. Right hand reaches out past your bent right knee, up towards the sky. Let's work. Now for me, what I tend to do here that's not good is I pop my left shoulder forward and I need to roll it back so that I've got one long, straight, strong line from left wrist to right wrist. One more breath. Bring that hand back down. Let's stretch out our right leg. I'm gonna walk my hands back. If you've got blocks, you'll be lifted up off the ground. I'm going to lengthen my right leg and lift my right toes. I'm in what's called an Ardha Hanumanasana or half split pose. I don't want to be sitting towards the floor. I want to be lifting my sit bones, my tailbone, towards the wall behind me. And as I do that, my hamstring really stretches out. It's a lot. So if you're like, woo, that's a lot, then roll back into a lunge. And then roll back to split. <laughs> Go back and forth with your breath if you'd like, or one breath, one movement. You can move slow, you can move fast, just kind of moving in and out of those sensations of ham right hamstring stretch to left front of your thigh quad stretch here for this lunge. Got it. 
come on back to um, Janayasana, which is low lunge. I'm going to test you out here. Hands come up to the top of the right knee. We'll tuck our back left toe. Let's see if we can do it. Push down on your right knee and lift to your high lunge. I have to sink back through that back heel. And then I might sweep my hands up to the sky. My legs are not changing though. So I have to engage the core, cinch the waistband. Great job. I can feel it from here. I can feel it in here. I can feel burning in my right thigh, left front of my thigh and stretching. Look those hands down. Drop the left knee. Swing the right hand to the inside of the right leg. And we'll swing that leg back around. Tabletop pose. Let's feel the difference between the legs now. So take a resting pose. It could be like puppy pose. It could be like child's pose. If your knees do not like to be bent or have this much pressure on them, then you can roll forward onto your belly and maintain crocodile pose. Anything where you can take a little rest, take a breather, come back to that chronic breath. Supercharging our body with that energy, with that breath. Feel the difference between the legs. And we'll move to the other side so that we can do that sequence on the left to create balance in the hips, the pelvis, the legs. It's fine. Rolling back up to tabletop. We'll take our four active cats. So three big ones on the fourth one, we'll lunge forward. So it's inhaling with the left leg to lift up control. Exhale, control as you bring the knee through. Inhale, lifting it up on purpose. Exhale, bringing the leg through. I almost picked up my water bottle. Inhale, <laughs> Yes, at least it's closed. <laughs> An open coffee cup is my move. <laughs> Left leg is going to lunge forward whenever you're ready to make that transition. So I start low and then we'll move through the layers of the pose. This is a low lizard lunge. The back right toe can be untucked or tucked. That's up to you. Next step, engage through the core. Hands come up to the left thigh. A really nice way to get that deep lunge where you get a good stretch in your right thigh. Left thigh is active and getting warm. Hands to the heart center, engage through the core. Sweep your hands up if you're ready or want to do that last move. Big breath there. And another one. Great job. We'll come back down, floating the hands to frame your left foot. Right hand into the mat or into a block. Left hand is going to reach out past the left leg and up to the sky, making sure that that right shoulder doesn't pop forward. You want to draw it back and make a nice, long, firm, strong line from left, right wrist to left wrist. One more breath. Exhale, bring the hand down to the outside of your left leg and walk my hands back, grab a block if you need. And I'm trying to lift my right toes up. Good trick is just to lift up, pick the leg out, and then fold over top for the half split pose. So remember, this should be a big left hamstring stretch, big time. It's more about tilting your pelvis forward to lift your tailbone up than it is about getting to the floor. And if you're like, ow, my leg, then make sure to keep moving, moving forward back to lunge. Noticing that right hip flexor stretch right here in your thigh in the lunge and noticing your left hamstring here with the, with the half split. So in and out of those sensations, there are a couple more rounds and if you fancy one over the other, then you can come out there. We'll be moving into a high lunge next. So let's set ourselves up for success in alignment. So I need to bring my foot back, I have to slide it back so that my knee is over top my ankle. 
I'm going to bring my hands up to the top of my left knee, tuck my back right toe, push down to lift up. I send my back right heel down to the mat so that I'm stretching that back calf back there. And then you can find which mudra you'd like. So it could be hands here, hands to the heart, hands with the lifted up overhead. On the other side, you took a turn with cactus arms. Nice. Inhale, reach back up. Send the hands down for the left foot. Drop the right knee. I swing my left hand to the inside so that I can swing that left leg back to tabletop and find my resting child's pose, puppy pose, whatever you like there. No rush, move slow and with control. And then breathe with control. Nice job. Quickly finding our way back to those relaxed breaks where we can tune into the sensations of our body. Now, as we record this, as we do this class, it is the last full moon of 2022 today, like right now. So make sure to peep it to the, <laughs> but also let's do a moon salutation. Inhale, roll yourself up to tabletop pose. Rearrange your knees, tuck your toes, and we'll roll up to our downward facing dog. Looking back at our toes, you don't need to get your heels down to the floor. Your knees can certainly stay bent here. Watch your feet there so that your energy, the energy of your body, the direction of your body is being pressed back towards your tailbone. Next, look forward towards your hands and notice how your body wants to go forward. So walk forward. When you come forward, we'll just hang for a moment and then we'll reset the spine, lifting our hands up to our shins, flat back, shoulders down away from our ears, Imagine that there's like a mirror out to the side of you and you look at put your body in that mirror and it looks like a number seven. Flat top, angled corner to the bottom. One more breath. Exhale, bend those knees, bend them a lot. Separate your feet if you need to to get your belly on your thighs. Let your arms just rest. I like to grasp on the opposite elbows. I let my head just hang. Remember, your body is saying, no, I don't like this. So make sure to do something different. Feel free to roll up to standing. We'll meet you there. That's our next step. So when you're ready, release your arms, sweep them outward in any direction. Keep your knees bent, sit down into a chair, lift your upper body, reach up to the sky and then lengthen up. Hands together, bring them to heart center. Control your breath. Relax with those exhales. Find that freedom with the breath. Good job. So we'll be taking those lunges that we learned earlier and adding them into the sun salutation to make it into a moon salutation. Inhale at heart center. Exhale, Tadasana, hands at the sides. Grounding. Inhale, the prana lifts as we inhale. As we exhale, up on a grounding forward fold towards the ground, towards the floor. As you inhale, lift your hands to your shins, flat back. The prana lifts you halfway. As you exhale, a prana is the opposite of prana, grounding to the floor. Nice work. So fingertips here on the mat. We're going to ground into our right foot. The left foot, swing it back and into the air. It's called assisted warrior three. So I've got all 10 fingertips on the floor and my right foot on the floor. If you don't want it to be assisted, you can challenge yourself to lift your hands up off the ground, even if it's just for a moment. 
we'll step back into a high lunge. So bending the standing right knee and stepping the left foot back for the back of your mat. Option to drop your left knee down to the floor if you like. I'm going to keep it lifted today. Hands can lift to the knee. Hands can lift to the heart. You can erect the spine coming up right. Hands can swing up over your head if you like. I lunge or low lunge with your left knee on the floor. That's totally available here. Inhale. Exhale, soften the right knee deeper. Inhale, prana, energy. Exhale, soften the left knee, the back knee. One more. Exhale, float your hands down, frame your right foot on purpose. Step your right foot back, downward dog. Got it. Nice work. You don't like the vinyasa portion? Stay right here. Hang out in downward dog. Otherwise, let's try to match it with our breath. Inhale, roll forward, plank. Exhale, chaturanga, elbows in tight. Inhale, heart lift. Exhale, back to the floor. Tuck your toes. Inhale, find your way up by the tabletop. I exhale while I'm here, reset my hands, and inhale back to my downward dog. Right leg lifted up to the sky, inhale. Exhale, step your right foot forward, then your left, then your right, inhale, exhale, as many breaths as you need. We're back in a forward fold, let's lift halfway, figure seven. Exhale, back to forward fold, upon a ground. Two more breaths here. Stop. Let's do the other side from here. Bend both knees, fingertips down to the mat. Put your weight into your left foot. Sweep your right foot back into the air behind you. Keep it lifted if you can. Strength is needed. Core strength, leg strength, ankle strength. I'm supporting myself with my fingertips. My left foot is grounded. You can challenge by lifting the hands. Step that right foot back towards the back of the mat whenever you need to, keeping the left foot grounded, knee bent. You can uh, drop your right knee down to the mat too. Option for low lunge, find your lunge. Hands to the knee is one option, or right knee is fine. Hands to the heart, hands up overhead. Takes a lot of concentration, a lot of balance, a lot of strength, focus. There's a lot going on here, breath. Soften the left knee deeper. Soften the right knee deeper. Hips will align. Inhale, exhale, float the hands down, frame the left foot. Ground yourself and step that foot back, downward dog. Again, if you don't like the vinyasa, stay right here. Otherwise, let's inhale forward to plank. Exhale, chaturanga, hug those elbows in tight. Inhale, heart lift. Exhale, back to crocodile. Inhale, press up to tabletop. Tuck your toes, rearrange your hands, and we'll find our way to our final downward dog. Left leg lifted up to the sky as high as we can. Look towards our hands, left leg forward first, then the right leg, then the left leg, as many steps as you need, breathing on the way. Inhale to lift halfway, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Hang out here if it feels okay. Bend your knees if you like. You can just dangle as long as you like, as long as your back feels happy here. If it's not enjoying it, swing the arms out, soften those knees, reverse swan dive. Bring my hands to heart center. Finish up that sun moon salutation. Good work. Look good. 
Is it good? <laughs> to bring ourselves down to the mat and take some time to rest while we're here today. So I'm gonna come back to the board bowl, set those feet back so that I don't kind of like twist myself down to the ground. And then we'll find our way into soup plane. Or if you're like, I don't really want to lay down today, you don't have to. You can find your way to choose the meditative pose, whatever that might be for you. As I lay back, I like to bring my knees into my chest. And that helps my back to flatten and kind of round back into the yoga mat, into the floor. Rock the legs a little from side to side. Start to slow the breath. Control the breath. I didn't stretch our outer thighs, so if that feels like something you need here, we can finish up with our standard figure four stretch. Where we bring our feet flat, knees bent, and across, say, the right leg over top the left thigh. Increasing stretch by picking the left foot up off the ground, bringing the legs closer to the torso, maybe rocking the legs a little bit from left to right. So you feel good, a good stretch in the outer right thigh, kind of where your sciatic nerves might run. It's a similar sensation that you might feel. Release the foot when you're ready and just simply switch sides so that you can Continue to try to maintain the balance in your body. When you're done, you just come back to the center pose. However, if your body is asking you to keep moving, please feel free to do that. But I always like to take time, pauses in our practice so that we can feel the sensations that we've created, become more aware of each area of our body, take time to tune in. Because we spend so much time in our life learning to ignore our body. I'm here to teach you to pay attention to the body. And what it's telling you is it doesn't speak in words. It speaks in sensation. And notice the changes you make. Use your breath as the guide, as the force. Push through any stagnations to unbraid the bonds that society has placed on us, creating those limiting beliefs that we have, and keeping us from our true potential, which is limitless. Freedom in your body, freedom in your breath. Freedom in your mind.
around this time of the year, near the end of the year, and when we putting that bug out there to create a word, one single word for your intention for the next year. You can work on that. We've got time. I already know mine. <laughs> but um, this year, 2022, my word was focus. Truth. When we start thinking about what is that one single word you'd like to encompass for 2023 should be. My word for next year is decide. I'm really bad at making decisions. <laughs> Even if someone's like, pick where to eat, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, so I'm like, decide. Decide. It's time. Let's start to decide which side we'd like to roll on to, or if that's an option, or maybe just kind of moving around, bringing some movement and awareness back to the body. Some people don't like to roll to a side, they prefer to just come up to a seat. So that choice is up to you. What do you mean? Gratitude for your body, with the ability to move on its own, for your organs that just keep doing their thing, the lungs that keep breathing, the heart that keeps beating. Everything just keeps working on its own. We don't even have to tell it to. Gratitude. Gratitude for your breath that is the energy through your practice brings the prana, the chi, the energy into your body and allows that energy, that oxygen to be dispersed through your whole body. Gratitude for your mind that got you here today. Allowed you to decide to show up today. I thank you, each of you for your presence. Thank you for rolling the mat out with me. I bow to you. Namaste. Namaste. Shukriya. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you feel better.